If you're a musician or any sort of creative person, there's a good chance that at some stage you've had some sort of writer's block or creator's block. So in this video, I'm gonna show you one technique that I use whenever I'm stuck for creative ideas. Let's go. So not only am I gonna tell you my idea for getting rid of that songwriter's block, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you here in GarageBand on my iPhone what I did recently when I was suffering from some songwriter's block and show you how I overcame it. So I did that by doing a short song challenge and it's something that I do quite often when I don't have the energy to write an entire song. But if you are new to the channel here, you might be saying, who are you and what are you telling me about? My name is Pete, this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music and you're not going to be releasing a whole lot of anything if you're stuck at the creating stage. So let's dive in now to GarageBand and I'll show you what I did recently and I'll take you through the track and along the way if you're interested in GarageBand you're going to learn a few cool little tips and tricks for how to produce your own songs in GarageBand. So let's jump in now. Okay, now let me explain the concept a little more for those who just want to get the gist and then go away and do their own thing. And then those that want to hang around and see the project itself and what I created here in GarageBand can stick around. So the concept of a short song challenge is to write a short song. We're talking 30 seconds to 60 seconds. So we're not talking verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus, whatever. We're just talking getting something down. Now, what I like to do is actually use a familiar song. Now in this case, I actually participated in a Twinkle Twinkle Little Star Challenge. Yes, you better believe it. I recorded my own interpretation of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but it's got quite a different spin as you're gonna find out if you listen in to the track. So the good part about doing something you're familiar with, like this song, is that it means that you don't have to spend your creative energy working out, you know, what's the melody gonna be? What's the premise gonna be? What's the song gonna be about? All of that jazz, you're just gonna jump in, create an idea and then build on it. And GarageBand is great for building up a track. And you can see here that I've built up this track using a lot of different instruments, mostly MIDI stuff here, but I do have some audio recorder for some vocals there. So we'll jump in and I'll show you what I did here. But if you just want to get the concept down and it can be as simple as grabbing an acoustic guitar and singing along or just getting a keyboard or a piano sound and singing along to that or not even singing at all, just creating a bunch of instruments and putting some virtual instruments in there. So go ahead and experiment with that. Do a short song challenge. Just pretend you're making a jingle or a theme song or a cover version of your favorite tune or your favorite advertisement jingle, whatever you want to do. Do, it's going to help you get past and then you'll come up with some cool ideas and some cool techniques that will help you with your bigger songs, which is exactly what happened for me when I did this song here. So let's jump in and see how I created Twinkle Twinkle Little Star here in GarageBand. Okay, if you're super brand new to GarageBand here on the iPhone or the iPad, I've got a great series which is all about how to get started. It's called my GarageBand Quick Jam series and I'll link to that up the top there now and down in the description. So if you want to learn how to do all the things I do in a bit more detail than I'm doing here, such as your keyboard instruments, your alchemy synth and all the rest, then you can jump in and take a look at that series. But I'm gonna assume you have a bit of a working knowledge of GarageBand at the moment, but I will explain a few things as we go along. So the first thing I wanted here, so Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, right? I wanted a loop, I wanted a repeating sort of background here to go through, a bit of a hook here. So I actually chose the Toy Celesta, which is from our Toy Box Pack here in GarageBand. You can download that from the sound library here in GarageBand. and. I just created a simple loop. You can see this is a looping little arrangement that just goes for these uh, two bars and it repeats again and again. It sounds a little bit like this. So yes, I'm going a minor key. Now this is a bit of a spooky song, by the way, if you're easily scared or if you've got kids watching and listening in. Uh, okay, it's not that bad, but I did want to go for a bit of a spooky kind of vibe on this track. So I went the minor key, this is in C minor, and it basically just does this little C minor pattern all the way through. Now, when I originally put this in, all it was is this one bar like this, or one two bar loop like that. And then to get my looping on there, we just went in here, we went to settings and we tap looping. And what it does is it loops it all the way through to the end. Now it's, it's looped too far now because uh, yeah, I'm gonna stuff that out. In fact, let's just undo that and then undo and then undo again because I can't remember exactly where I looped through to. Uh, there it is. So that's how I created that. And uh, I just recorded that using the touch instrument here on the keyboard and just playing. I can't even remember how I played it now. But yes, I played, I think it was like an octave. Yeah, something like that. So 
that was my bass. And then I thought, okay, that's that's cool. I want to record my vocals next because I wanted to build the rest of my instruments around how I wanted to sing these vocals. So I grabbed my headset microphone, which I use for a lot of my vocals when I'm doing things like this, because you know what? Quality is not actually that bad. I've done entire videos where I talk about how you can record with no gear in GarageBand. It's absolutely possible. You don't need the latest and greatest tech. You can get it done. Anyway, here is what I recorded. I recorded two vocal parts and we've got one pan left and one pan right. You will not hear the panning because <laughs> GarageBand, uh, sorry, the screen recorder here doesn't record in stereo. But anyway, just imagine that they're panned and at the end of this video, I'll play the whole thing and I'll put a stereo version in there so you can take a listen to the actual version of it. But let's just play both of these tracks now. This is what the vocal I recorded sounds like. <laughs> So you can tell that I was going for a very sort of creepy vibe. They're very airy, breathy kind of vocal. And to do that, what I did is jumped in here and went to my plugins and EQ. And I've talked about these plenty here on the channel. So you can check out all of my other videos for how to do all this. But I've got a heap of one eighth note track echo here. That's 20% wet. And on the track reverb, I've got a 42%. So I've really made this sort of swimming in reverb and delay to get that sort of sound that I was going for. And the same thing on the other channel i just wanted to get those two together and you hear sort of towards the end of the track the reason i wanted both is i kind of do a bit of a slightly out of tune singing to sort of make it extra creepy towards the end uh, at least i think it's a bit creepy so that is how i laid down my first two tracks i've got my sort of main melody ish kind of line there or background line and then we've got our lead vocals and then now it is time to build up around this that we've got that down and yeah the real benefit of using something non-original is that we can now just experiment we can just change things around and play it with this track so what i wanted next to go along with this let's just take the vocals off for now is to have a bit of a beat so up the top here we have our drums and this is just doing this sort of pattern all the way through So we've just got our little sort of heartbeat um, heartbeat on our four on the floor kit there. If we come in here, you can see again, I've just used looping to make this the same all the way through. If we tap and go to edit and we look at the MIDI notes here, they are just on the kick drum or the bass drum there all the way through. If we look at the first one there and go to velocity, the velocity is up a little bit and then down a little bit. So that's what creates that heartbeat sort of doof, doof. Doof, doof, that we have all the way through. And I then wanted to throw a hi-hat on here as well. So I've grabbed the same kit here and I'm doing a hi-hat. So the doof, doof goes on beats one and three and I wanted something on beat two. So let's just play these. I'll take the melody off and you'll hear what our overall drums sound. Very simplistic drums here. It sounds like this. So yeah, very basic beat. But when you put that with, the, with the, this here and then when we have our vocals in as well. So at this stage of the project, all I had was this. So let's just come in and take a listen where we've got our vocals coming in, which is further down, down here. Even further. So I was like, yep, I'm liking that, but you know what, we got no bass. We need to get some bass sounds in this in a big bad way. So let's just turn all of this stuff off for now. And I'll show you, actually we'll leave the, the drums on because the drums are what I built the bass around as well. The first thing I wanted was a really epic sort of big sub bass kind of sound. So I went with the Alchemy synth. And if you haven't played with the Alchemy synth before, you must. It is very awesome. It's available on most devices running GarageBand version 2.3 point whatever. Um, 2.3.6 being the latest version. So let's take a listen to what I put in here. You can see that there's just individual notes here, but I think they sound pretty epic. They sound like this. So that's just giving you that real just sort of bang, bang. And again, I played it by hand. I don't know why I didn't just loop it. Oh, that's right, because I did a few little variations. So let's just listen to the variations down here. So it went there and then it goes... And you'll hear how that uh, how that plays into the overall track when we get down to that part. So that's sort of first part of the bass. I then wanted some additional bass, so we grabbed the bass keys, which is another of our alchemy synth, and we wanted that to do something a little bit more complex. That does this.
So I, I've kind of I've I've channeled like old school. Like if you played Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Ghosts, those old school uh, '80s games, uh, they always had this really cool soundtrack, and it was always this sort of like yeah, it's a little bit higher pitch because it was sort of chip tune style. But I wanted to get that sort of feel, and I wasn't done there. I wanted one more bass in here, so I've gone with the classic synth bass, and that one joins us here and does a little bit of this. So that one I'm particularly proud of because I really like, I added a bit of a manual warble effect and recently I did a video about 3D touch, which I must admit I very rarely used here in GarageBand, but it's actually a really cool feature. It's only available on the iPhone, iPhone 6S and above, but when we tap on a note here, like that, it's just gonna play our normal note, but what we can do is we can actually So what I'm doing is I'm actually manually pushing harder on every beat. So instead of just getting, which is pretty cool to begin with, I can actually add in that warble effect by just tapping and then tapping hard, like holding and pushing a bit harder on the beat. And I think that that sounds pretty good. When we bring it all together, let's just add back in our plucked ghosts, our toy celeste, our bass keys, our four on the floor. We'll build this up and then we'll start talking about the treble instruments as well that we put in here. But let's just take a listen to now of my drum and bass version. Uh, let's just come down here a little bit so you can hear it where it's built up a little bit. And there you can hear that sort of slightly off key vocal that I did and I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by what I said that I did that on purpose to make it sound a bit cooler. Let's go with that. Uh, I think it works anyway in this particular track. All right, what we're gonna need to do now is take off all of these solos because let's come in and take a look at what we did with our treble instruments. So we've got our drums, we've got our bass, we've got our vocals down. I was having an awful lot of fun at this point. I was only about half an hour in when I was creating this originally, just layering these sounds, layering the different bass sounds and getting everything using that um, you know, single wavering note there. And I was like, okay, now we need to get put alchemy to the test to get some awesome lead synths and some pads in here because uh synth sort of the the lead instruments and the pads are really what fills out the track at the moment it sounds okay but it's a bit too sparse we need to fill in the gaps of the frequency range and we need to do so that with some treble instruments so the first thing that we have here if i can find is this one here i added this metallic bell atmosphere so we'll come in here we'll solo this and this is doing a little bit of this action So again, sticking with our theme of that sort of really creepy vibe that we're going with there, and it wasn't enough, actually, I, I tell a lie, I actually added these shimmering bells first, and then I wanted something to complement them, so I added in the metallic bell atmosphere. So let's listen to the shimmering bells, uh, and then I'll add in the metallic bell atmosphere. So originally I had this sort of at the very intro part. So that's a bit of that sort of Stranger Things kind of style synth that uh, that I like using if you wanted some sort of a bit more of a creepy vibe. And then I added in the Metallic Bell Atmosphere. And then that just continues on sort of as a bit of a pad and then comes back and does some other little bits here towards the end, does a little bit of this. So just to keep things interesting as we go through there. And then I wanted a choir, so I wanted some sort of creepy choir of the damned to be playing in here as well. And that's why we went with the ether choir. Sure, let's go with that. And that one sounds a bit like this. So that one's very much a pad there. It does a little bit of movement towards the end, as you can see but it's mostly using as a pad at the moment. Let's just come towards the end here and we'll play a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
And then in the second verse, for want of a better word, it does an octave there. So that's really just showing how we want some variety. So we want it to build up so that the second verse sounds fuller than the first. So you can see we play a single note here, it does a little bit of variation, and then it goes into a, an octave. And that's a good way to add some extra sort of uh, flavor and variety to a second verse of a song like this. So we were getting close. I was like, yep, I'm liking this. We've got all of these things going on here, and it's, it's sounding okay. But what I'll do is let's just uh, mute out these last two because there's a couple of extra little synths that I've added in there towards the end. Because in the transition part here, it just sounded a bit vacant. I'll play it and you'll hopefully see what I mean and then I'll show you what I added in here to fill it out. So there's a bit of a gap there and I'm like, that's boring. We need something to come in over that gap. So what I decided was let's bring in some additional alchemy synths. We've got our synth chime echoes and our scarlet, which I think are from our lead or our pads. They're all in there. There's so many things in alchemy synth. I never remember where I get things from, but you can play around with these. You'll be able to see all the names. I've left all the names of things in there. So with these in here, we have something that I think sounds pretty cool. There you go. I think it sounds pretty good. I think it suits the track really well. It just adds something to that little breakdown part there between our verses, again, for want of a better word. Now, the, the interesting thing is here is if you look at this one, Scarlet in particular, when we come in here and we go to edit, to go to the MIDI notes, you'll notice here that it's actually only, if I can find it, one, one individual note. So let's come here and we'll play it and you'll be able to take a look. So what, what sorcery is this? What's going on here? And yeah, it's got a really cool, that's the delay effect. It's got like a, a quarter note delay at the end. So on, on this synth, it's really, really cool. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So what, what are we actually doing here and how do we get that sound? So this is using one of my favorite little features here that we can have in our synth. So if we go to the keyboard of this one, at, you can see at the top here, we've got pitch enabled. Now by default, you're gonna have glissando or you're gonna have scroll, but some of our synth instruments, you can actually use pitch. So I'll show you the difference here. Glissando means if we tap on a note, very standard sort of the way a piano works. And then if we go to scroll, it's gonna go like that. So it's gonna go up and down our piano. But with some of these instruments, we've got pitch, which means we can do something like this. And there's that, that delay that you get on there, that really long tail delay. So you can actually just move your finger around your keyboard and it's gonna show us only one note, but you're basically just doing a whole heap of crazy pitch bends. So it makes it really hard to edit. So you have to get it right when you record it. But if you get it right, you can try it a few times, obviously as many times as you need to it's gonna sound pretty cool, in my humble opinion. So that is it, that is how we did this. Now, this whole thing took me just over an hour and I wanna throw out some credit and some love there to the GarageBand users Facebook group and my friend Daniel over there who actually had the idea for this particular challenge and it came at just the right time because I really needed to do a short song challenge. I was working on some songs and they just weren't coming together. I needed to take an absolute break from the acoustic guitar and the vocals and the songwriting. So this came at just the right time and I think that it's come together pretty well. I think it's sounding pretty cool and I'm pretty proud of the arrangement. I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think this is gonna be released anytime soon. Um, maybe a bonus track on a future EP, who knows? But at this stage, at least I've got something done that it's really, it got me past that songwriter's block phase. So there you go. What I'm going to do before we finish off here is I'll play you the entire track. I'll flip out of here. I'll do a stereo recording so you can listen to how the complete track sounds here in GarageBand.
And there you go, I hope you found that helpful, useful, entertaining, or a combination of all three. And I hope it can get you out of that songwriter's or that creator's block that you may be struggling with right now. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like to check out some more videos here on the channel, I've got two linked right down below. You can also subscribe by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon up in the top right corner, or you can head on over to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.